Hello and uh, good evening everybody. Today I'm joined by my friend of the Man Patriot podcast, he's Dumo Denga, and he's uh, also an analyst on economics. He's wrote, he wrote a very interesting article for the, um, I think it's the Ludwig von Mises Foundation on the role of the new of the uh, energy regulator, NERSA, National Energy Regulator of South Africa. So Dumo, welcome to this uh, podcast. Hi Hugo, uh, thanks for having me on. It's really great to be on your show again. And yeah, I'm looking forward to a great discussion. Mm. Yeah, um, so you wrote a very uh, interesting uh, um, article here about the role of the, um, you know, of NERSA basically to, to set tariffs and intervene in ESCOM's, um, you know, day to day operations. C can you maybe give us a history lesson a little bit on NERSA and how this whole system came about? Right. So, look, um, NERSA is like the electricity board, the ECB uh, of old. So the ECB. Uh, started in 1922. That was the same year ESCOM actually became a, um, a a government entity. And basically, ESCOM, what they did prior, they the government bought all the other private uh, power suppliers or private stations and so forth. And then ESCOM was formed. And then ESCOM, you know, um, I think. Well, let me not go into the benefits, but they 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 had some nice they had some nice perks that um, every private company wished they had. Let me put it that way. But um, just going back to the to NERSA and the ECB. So basically, um, the e the ECB um, when it uh, began, it basically just had um, the right to license operations of private generations, and and ESCOM would actually approve the tariffs that um, the ECB brought along. This was in 1922, of course, and then afterwards, um, if you were in a province and you wanted to actually um, you know, build some power uh, generation facility, you had to go to a provincial administrator and then the provincial administrator would then go to ESCOM to see if ESCOM could actually charge a cheaper price. Nice perks. I mean, if I was a, I mean, just imagine if I had a company and all other companies had to come to me to see if they can compete and I'd give them and, and, and give them some benefit of the doubt or something, then that'll be great. That'll be an awesome thing. I mean, I wish I had a company that had those privileges, but of course, I am a free market. So, so it was like, so. what do you call it? A veto, a veto monopoly or something? Like exactly. Mafia, That's basically. it. A veto monopoly. You choose who competes. I mean, and did, like, did ESCOM brilliant. ever allow somebody else to compete? Was that ever considered? I th I think they did. I didn't get get into those details, but I think they did. I think there was some where they they said yes, and others where they said no. I don't think they said no to everyone. Um, of course, I mean, at some point, I mean, if, if I, again, I'm thinking about if I was in that position, right? Um, if I was in that position, if there was a, a another company that said they were going to um, build something in the Eastern Cape, for example, in the rural areas, and like, I just didn't have um, appetite to go there, then I'll say, yeah, yeah, go there, go there, go there. Um, and, and then I'll give the, re the, re the reason that I'll give to nurses is that we're currently not operating there. We have no plans of operating there so they can go there. You know what I mean? Um, so, but if someone was wanted to actually eat in my current pie, let's say I already provide to Cape Town and someone else wants to provide to Cape Town, then I'll, of course I'd say no. Even if you could provide it cheaper, I'd say no, I can provide it cheaper, you know? And then we'll, we'll get it subsidized somehow, you know? So... You know, you know how it works, Hugo. I mean, we all would like to be monopolists, but unfortunately we can't because there are people that are better than us at doing stuff. But yeah. Well, the way I looked at it, whenever I played Monopoly as a child, I was always yeah. the bank. Okay. I didn't yes. care <laughs> if you were in control. I just wanted to print the money, you know, because I figured out very early the more money you print, the more you steal, you know? Exactly. <laughs> but I, I, don't know if, I don't know if inflation hit. Uh, was a concept, have I ever experienced the concept of inflation on monop while playing Monopoly? Oh, I, I um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, actually, I have. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, because there were those guys. They realized that you're printing more money, and they're like, "Hey, I can charge more. Let me get more money." And you know, but yeah. Um, so that was the ECB, right? Then in 1987, also, I just want to make sure I got my years right because I don't want people to say, "Hey, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about." So in 1987. Um, uh, the ECB got more privileges and then what they could do is they could set prices. They could tell you where to operate, uh, what to produce and everything like that, who you can provide uh, electricity to. Then NERSA came along in 2006 and NERSA basically was the ECB with a new name, but with even more powers. So basically... This is this this is the, the interesting so this part. This is now so, sorry, just 2006. Mm, okay. 2006. Okay, now, yeah. um, have you looked into the 1998 white paper? What that played the role as well? 
because there was a path to mm-hmm. privatization that called for NERSA, I think, which was great in 2006. You know. Um, no, I just looked at I looked at the regulator specifically because okay. um, the article was about licensing laws and how they disincentivize competition. So, I mean, look, I mean, if there was a white paper in 1998 that explained, um, you know, the, 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 well, calling for the existence of NERSA, I'm unaware of that. Um, but I just looked at the privileges that NERSA what, had. What are you going to say mm-hmm. now? Because 1998, that's when ESCOM went to government and said, uh, look, guys, population will double in 2008, and you guys need to stop going power station. We have excess supply now, but we're not going to have enough future because the population is growing. Mm-hmm. It's called supply and demand problem. And government says in 1998, no, you're going to be privatized, and the private sector will do it. Okay, but the problem is because electricity prices were so low at that time, the private sector said we can't come into this market because there's just no fat in the system. Because remember, the apartheid government overbuilt mm-hmm. the power, right? No, yeah, yeah. the private sector will fix it. So we had to wait for the price to go up. But now I think this is where your story comes in 2006. Then they created NERSCA, which was tariff. I think I'll let you continue from there. Yes. So in 2006, NERSA came along and the powers they have, well, the powers that they were given in legislation, in my opinion, were quite incredible compared to what the ECB had, right? So I just want to read them out to you quickly, right? Um, the first one, they could issue licenses that grant exclusive electricity generation, distribution and trade rights to licensees. They could obligate or allow licensees to supply electricity to specific customer classes or end users. They could obligate or allow licensees to buy electricity from specific suppliers. They could obligate or allow licensees to sell or produce certain types of energy. And they can also make any other condition they want, right? Then what makes this worse is that um, when you apply for a license with NERSA, NERSA has to respond within 120, no, not 120 days, 120 days, yeah. But um, they're, they're not obligated to give you a license. And they can say you can't have the license because of whatever reason. But if they do give you a license, it's severely restricted. So it, it goes back to your 1998 story where the private sector said, oh, we're not going to come in here. There's so many power stations. I don't see us making money from this. Makes sense. But then now people are, well, private, the private sector probably is not incentivized to get in right now because of the fact that NERSA has very broad powers on what type of licenses they can issue. So they can say, listen, fine, you can provide for this town, all right, at this price, and you can only produce this energy. And if you need to buy energy from someone else, you can only buy from this person. So these guys can literally organize the electricity market in the manner in which they want. And then I argued that this actually would serve um, incumbents in the in- industry, not necessarily ESCOM, because remember, NERSA can give our license whoever they wish and they can also reject whomever they wish so that's nurse in a nutshell okay so nurse is basically a gatekeeper for new power in south africa if you understand it that yeah. way okay mm-hmm. and you're saying the licensing laws at the moment is well, theoretically it would, it would favor smaller suppliers over larger suppliers is that correct no no the, the, it'll 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 favor the incumbents the larger suppliers so definitely oh, escom and the others that nurse prefers now, I'm not insinuating that there's some corruption going on, but, of course, you know, Africa, they, no? <laughs> yeah, you know, not in South Africa. I mean, I mean, we clean. We like, come on, we're the best country in the world, right? <laughs> Which is why you're in France, right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but the, 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 the argument is just that, like, um, again, not insinuate, I'm not insinuating corruption, but it's, it really breeds that environment. Because if you have such incredible powers, you are going to use it to either benefit yourself or your friends. It's that simple. It's like what Hans Hermann Hoppe said when he criticized the idea of the state. He will say that the state is a monopoly of ultimate decision making, which means that they have the last word on every issue and they also have um, uh, the last word on every conflict that happens within their region. And then what he's saying is that, well, if someone has, such, has a power of that nature, they are definitely going to use that power to benefit themselves. And even in the situation where they co- cause conflict as well, and then they'll rule in their own favor. So NERSA has got some, something close to that, I would say. Okay, but here's, here's the interesting thing then. So if we were theoretically to take NERSA's powers away, because my understanding is ESCOM, when the ECB was there, ESCOM could set its own tariff, right? 
and could only recover the yeah. cost. So, okay. So my, my biggest objection is actually not the licensing, it's the tariff. Um, the tariff mm -hmm. is not allowing ESCOM to have a signal, a market signal, if you will, to say, listen, guys, we need to increase our tariff to increase supply, right? And if ESCOM keeps on, let's mm -hmm. assume the tariff goes off tomorrow, the price would go up and the price would go up. Investors would say, hey, we can build stuff. And if ESCOM doesn't react by building new LNG plants or gas or coal, whatever they build, solar, doesn't matter. Private sector can come in and compete against ESCOM. Right? Exactly. So, yeah, this I, I, I agree with that. I wouldn't say it's an objection. I mean, it goes in line with what um, uh, Mises said uh, about socialism, where he said that um, in a market where um, the means of production are centrally planned, they cannot be traded. And if they cannot be traded, then there's no prices um, that indicate market conditions. Now, uh, in your situation, what's happening is that the regulator is telling ESCOM to sell something at a particular price, which means that the price that ESCOM is selling electricity for does not reflect the market conditions. And I agree with you on that one. I think that's actually a, a great observation. Then, which also ties into the whole thing about NERSA and its licensing laws, because part of the conditions or the powers that NERSA has is to set the price, right? And I'm saying, and that's part of the licensing laws, and that also impacts other people coming into the market. So I definitely agree with that, Hugo. I think that definitely when it comes to NERSA and them setting the prices, it definitely does distort the market. And also it hampers ESCOM as well, because ESCOM, it, it, ESCOM actually took NERSA to court over a price increase because they felt it was not enough. I, and I think ESCOM won that one, if I'm not mistaken. I think ESCOM won huh. that one. I, um, but, and, but if, you, if, you, if you look at it just like mm. basic business practices, right? So my mother mm. was a small business owner, and I, I know you work for a company. Right? Imagine if in her business she was forced to sell at a loss. How long is she going exactly. to survive? Okay. And now ESCOM is a, gets this debt. We need electricity. And government says we're going to give you debt extensions. So ESCOM's debt is actually what electricity would have cost. If you think of it, I mean, okay, there's corruption and right. stuff like that, but yeah. it's basically the, 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 the point I've been trying to make to people, and get you beyond it, is the framework of NERSA that ESCOM is under is causing systemic sabotage. It's the worst of both worlds. We're not allowed, ESCOM is not allowed to even do maintenance at one stage. They were prevented by NERSA, right? They're not allowed to set their own price, so they're selling at a loss. The wheel's going to fall off the bus. And at the same time, they're blocking new guys from coming in to compete against next, uh, right. ESCOM. So it's, it's like the, the worst type of regulator in the world. And that's just really exactly. Exactly. I, I, I agree with that 110%. I think, I think the, the, the setup and the powers that they're given just do, do not encourage uh, better innovation or better electricity supply in the electricity market. So, you know, just to give a quick rundown of it, for those who haven't read the article, uh, basically uh, from the beginning of load shedding up until the end of 2022, um, ESCOM's electricity production decreased by 18%. And we've never, de we've never gone above that. 2007 was like actually the peak, right? Then um, also ESCOM has 94% a share of the electricity production of South Africa. So when they go down, everybody goes down. Now, fortunately, we have seen an increase in um, IPPs or independent power producers. Okay, let me not say that. Let me not say that because I think that that might give off the wrong impression. Let me just say that the difference between the the share that ESCOM does not have of the market, right? The people in that bracket, their electricity production in that same time has increased quite significantly, but it's not enough. I'm not going to say the IPPs because uh, Stats S8 did not say specifically. Um, they just said, here's South Africa's electricity production and here's ESCOMs. And then I just mined, I just worked out the difference between the two. Yeah, just wanted to put it out there. Yeah, so the um, IPPs, the solar, I looked at the other day, that we've got only four mm -hmm. megawatt of solar. But you see, here's another problem with IPPs. Mm -hmm. Currently, all IPPs in South Africa, I think half of the solar and wind stuff has failed, okay? They're coming in at rates that is higher than ESCOM. Okay, why? Because NERSA is price fixing. So the IPPs cannot compete at that low rate, okay? And ESCOM cannot raise its rate to recover the costs. So the wheels fall off at Buzz, uh, of NERSA, and the private sector is, is still at the point where it says it's too expensive to come into the market. So we create the exactly. sabotage through the tariff. It's just uncertainty what's happening. It, it, it agreed. It, 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 yeah, I, I think for me, the tariff, the tariff example, I think it, 
it, it's it's almost like a snipe shot, right? So I use the shotgun and I said, "Hey, it's the licensing law." I still hit the target, but you went and got you went and you went with the headshot, right? So that it's it's exactly that, you know. You got a you got a um a regulator that can set the price, but then the price that they set is not a good price. And then when private people come in, they realize, hey, I can't compete here. And the ones that are looking from the outside, they're like, I ain't going in there. I mean, whoa, I'm not gonna survive. And then the guys that are already competing. They're fighting with the regulator, wanting a price increase that can at least cover the operations of the uh, the cost of their operations. It's it's a mess, Google. It's a mess. I I I, I agree with you 110 percent on that. It's a mess. No, it's 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 it's, it's, it's really. I, I mean, I I found uh, I was looking into this issue. It took me a while to get to the right answer because I thought, was it the engineers? Is it affirmative action? Is it corruption? Uh, I think to conclude, you know, those things might be there. You know, I, I don't deny that they play some role in it, but I don't think that's the biggest right. issue because you have private sector companies, South Africa, that, that does all those transformations. The Telcom, good example, okay? We right. might disagree on how BE is applied to Telcom, fine. But Telcom operates quite efficiently, and so does MTN and these guys with all those rules and restrictions. But for some reason, Mescom cannot do it. It's got nothing to do with the expertise exactly. of the people. It's right. got to do with the conditions of the of the regulator. It's so stupid. Yeah, I, I, Agreed. And I mean, and remember, he's the, 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 the regulator, as I said, besides setting the price and it's and, and, and Hugo, when I say this, right, it's actually written in the legislation, right? It's not something that you will figure out by, you know, it, it's not something that's implied. It's explicit. And one of those conditions is that um, that NURSA, they can sub they can put any licensee. Um, t- on any condition they can they can create whatever condition they want they can subject any licensee to whatever condition so they could say listen Dumo, you want to you, you want to build a nuclear power station no problem no problem just build it all you need to do is um something stupid like something re- retarded like you need to pay us a trillion rand a month something like that but you may say nursa may not do that but they can g- given those powers but that's the whole point now when somebody who wants to enter into the electricity market sees that they're going to be like, well, Hey man, I don't have, I don't have, um, brown paper bag money. I mean, like the bank can only give me so much. Sorry. L- let me just leave my money in the bank account and let it grow. A- a- at least then it'll, it'll slightly beat inflation, but at least I still got my money. And that's what happens. People just chill. <laughs> so we basically have a supply and demand fix. So, okay, now yeah. I want to get to you. So if I diagnose the problem, two things. It's tariffs right. and it's licensing, right? And I think tariff is worse than licensing, but licensing, I agree with you. I mean, that's also blocking. But I think even if you take licensing away, I don't think IPPs are going to come in. Okay, we, they might. Some might, you know, but it's, it's a very difficult mm-hmm. market. Maybe LNG, it's cheapest, you know, to come at that low price. So here's the question then. Um, how does one get... What, what do you want to do with NERSA? Like, what should government do with NERSA or whatever politics? Oh, yeah. okay. So I'm I, I'm just going to... Look, I, I don't want to give a... I don't want to be like Milton Friedman and give an efficient state solution because I know libertarians are going to slate me for this. So I'm just going to say it as it is. Like, as, as what, a, as what a, an anarcho-capitalist would say. Get rid of NERSA. Get rid of them, right? Um, NERSA... You can, the guys at NERSA... Uh, ESCOM can hire them or they can be hired by any other private sector um, electricity provider. I'm pretty sure there are experts in NERSA who can actually do better in a, a, in a private sector environment. So you get rid of them. So when you get rid of NERSA, what do you get rid of? You get rid of their uh, powers on or well, their very broad powers that they can use to restrict people to get into the market and also restrict people who are already in the market. So then... That'll solve the licensing problem. But also, there won't be anyone who's going to set, um, that, that'll say you should charge at a particular price who you can buy from and everyone. Then that solves the price problem. Now, the only challenge would be is that now, and I think this is a more of a, pra- this is more of pragmatic. So I, I dealt with the, with the theoretical stuff. Now it's the pragmatic stuff. Like the actual, now we're adding other factors in. Like, okay, ESCOM is really big. They can charge really, 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 really low prices. And there's a grid and so forth and so forth and so forth. Well, then I would just say that now that we've removed the regulations, let's see what other solutions that the market can come up with that, that, that can compete so they can compete with ESCOM. So we must also be considerate in the fact that it's not necessarily about the price, okay? When people purchase goods and services, sometimes they will purchase it for reasons that not necessarily deal with price. So 
one could say, okay, look, I've got a, I got a, I get my power from company X. They only supply for this small town. Yes, they charge three cents more per kilowatt than ESCOM, but that three cents is means that I'll have less power cuts. Um, that means it, that means I can, you know, be able to run my business more efficiently and stuff like that. Those type of things. So I think. Um, so I'm going to give you the solution can... that you explained to me there. We are selling yeah. electricity at the moment as if it's a stock, as if we're mining it, which is nonsense. Mm -hmm. It should be sold as a service. It's like right. airtime. Okay, you have a cell phone contract. Right. You maybe need a. I don't know what cell phones cost in South Africa these days, but you know, <laughs> for argument's sake, you pay say two hundred rand a month for your cell phone contract. Okay, right. whatever it costs, and you then say, but I want a contract with airtime. Other guys said, I don't want data, but I want this and that. So you've got different options. Okay, so for electricity, it should be sold not per kilowatt hour, but as amps, access to the grid. So Dumo, you pay four hundred rand a month. And you get electricity, you can use as much as you will. And yeah, yeah. Okay. Another guy have to have, you know, big power for his house. He can pay what he wants. And we have a variety of products coming out. And then whoever sells that, whether he buys from ESCOM or from an LNG tank or he uses a solar panel, it doesn't matter. That's how you should sell exactly. it. So electricity should you, be you know what, like a service. You, you know what, Hugo? <laughs> yeah. If I ever take over this country, like... If it, in the rare situation that I ever take over this country, I want to call you and say, listen, can you please be my minister of energy or whatever? Because that solution that you just provided right now, it cannot be provided because of NERSA. Because now let's say, for example, you come to NERSA and say, hey, we've got this really cool solution. We've got, we got a, a little grid and we're going to try it in a small town and, and we're going to pay um, for access to the grid as opposed to per kilowatt hour then they'll be like no but everyone charges per kilowatt hour sorry license denied that's the problem so when you when you eliminate nursa people like that can come in and they can try that and if that works then it works then escom will be like hey guys they're charging for access to the grid perhaps we should do that too and then they're going to copy that but that cannot happen because of nursa and and yeah and, and look man if you're watching this and you're from nursa look man no disrespect, but come on, man. Like, guys, like, you, 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 you well, got to I, allow I, the market I, I to flourish. I want to send this, uh, this article. I know people <laughs> who listen here can send this yeah. to Sputla and Minister Montage. I don't care which one comes Please. up with the idea. Okay? Please. Take NERSA. This is my advice to, to Minister uh, to Sputla. And he's a civil engineer. He's got the same qualification as me. He's actually more qualified. He's a doctor. So he's intelligent enough to understand this. Okay? Ooh, okay. Take NERSA and reintegrate it into ESCOM. That's my advice. You, you keep the jobs. You don't kill take anyone's jobs because those, I know he was, he was complaining about the guys at Kumati and I agree with him. We should not take away coal because it sounds unfashionable. Here's the thing. Integrate into NERSA, allow ESCOM to reset its, prior, its tariff, go back to the old structure we had before 1998 mm -hmm. and simultaneously this IRP thing where we have so many gigawatts for South Africa of nuclear, of this, of that, or whatever, just get rid of the gigawatts. We don't know how much we need as a country. The idea that government or NERSA can determine how much of a mix we need is ridiculous. Just let people come in with a mix. And before you do it, if, if we allow natural gas to come in without really any restrictions in South Africa or limited regulation for safety, we will solve the load shedding problem within 18 months to three years. Problem done. Good. They'll just park a ship and they'll say, listen, light the thing up. It's very easy to get on the grid. The problem is they can't come in because of the tariff that we've just explained. There's no issue Exactly. There. Exactly. And, you, and now... That I think that for me just shows why we don't need NERSA because something so small is really having this ripple effect on the opportunities that can arise as a result of not having that tariff. Well, I think not having NERSA in, 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 at all, right? So I, I, I agree there. I think for me personally, it doesn't make a difference. Um, well, if you look at my solution specifically uh, and w that I wrote in the article, I did not say what should happen to ESCOM. And I purposefully did not answer that question because I wanted to, um, you know, speak on the NERSA issue. But even though I didn't, I still think a statist could come along and say, yeah, let's take NERSA out. Let's, let's allow um, the market to come up, up, come up with solutions. We can still try to save ESCOM in one way or the other. But again, it could be happen that the market could become so better and efficient that ESCOM could actually become less relevant in the market and they may have to shut down and stuff like that but when i say shut down i mean obviously in a slow landing type of way it's not going to be a, a hard landing well, well the, the, um, the thing yeah. is um the world bank in 2018 did a, a, mm -hmm. a um, an article where they compared nationalized against privatized utilities 
And what I found is no difference, except South Africa is like, often the stratosphere doesn't mm -hmm. work, right? Because of bad regulatory policy. This is all it comes down to. So mm -hmm. a nationalized utility can still compete against the private sector. Okay, it can even be more efficient if under the, under the correct regulations, which is no, no, no gatekeeping, basically, because if a nationalized utility fails tomorrow, a private investor will come in. So if it's well managed and well staffed, it's already under market pressure, if you understand it that way. It can do that. Right. Way. And the government can also use it, and I, I'm not against this, for its developmental goals. Because I understand there are social democrats in any country in the world, and you, I know some people are against them, and I have no issue with that. You can still have electrification. Because you see, this is what was ridiculous. NERSA imposed those tariffs on ESCOM. And at the same time, it told ESCOM, you have to electrify the entire South Africa because, you know, a lot of black people didn't have electricity in apartheid. So you put it in an impossible position. Not even the best manager, the most, even if there was no BE or transformation mm. or corruptions, old people say, ESCOM would have gone the same route. That's the point I'm trying to make because of NERSA, because of one institution. That is the problem in South Africa. Right. And as you say, we don't want to tell the people at NERSA we all hate you. It's just you guys are the gatekeepers. I'm sorry to say so. Let's get rid of them. Exactly. Get, exactly. Get rid of them. And yeah, I mean, a statist and, and uh, let's say a narco-capitalist would agree on that. Perhaps there would be a difference on what should happen to ESCOM. Uh, but I think um, the narco-capitalist will have a well their objection to escom will be based on uh what is it uh what uh it's not the non-aggression principle it's the natural theory of property yeah um they'll just say that look escom is owned by the state and the state is an aggressor and yeah. whatever the state contains yeah, but that, that's too like philosophical that. for but south that, africa's politics yeah. at this stage, right? <laughs> like I, i'm not I, I don't i don't entertain those arguments. but i have to put it out there hugo i have to put it out there just in case people ask and say okay why do you guys don't want um um the escom but it's more uh, philosophical than it is yeah, yeah, but you see, I, I also, just from a pragmatic point of view, because ESCOM was so integrated into apartheid's grand plan, grand strategy, total strategy, okay, you, you're going to provoke geopolitical tensions if you privatize it. So privatization is not the option to me at this stage. It's not an answer. Mm -hmm. The answer to me is just simply get rid of nurse and let the private sector come in on its own terms, compete against ESCOM. You save the nationalists, yep. so Malema can be happy. All those 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 unionists and Peris and all those guys can be happy if they call. And at the same time, those guys at UCT that want to privatize everything can come in as well. Okay, and even guys like me that want nuclear can still get, can still have it. You know, we can all eat on the same pie, and it's one institution that's blocking the entire country from developing. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, definitely. And just to add to your point, I mean, the 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 geopolitical tensions, if Nursa is gone uh, in under the situation where nurse does not exist could actually improve uh because now what would happen is that the private sector could actually negotiate um with these um geopolitical let me not say structures but let's say stakeholders and they can say hey escom gave us a rubbish deal you guys got a better one sorry escom cheers bye and then they go to that guy you know what i mean so i think it could actually improve geopolitical situations if nurse is out of the way again nurse we don't hate you but man there's, there's so much opportunity. There, there, there's just... another reform that I want to say, and I know the DA is yeah. going to hate me for this one. Right. At the moment, ESCOM has to sell to customers, but it can't collect the money. The municipalities has to collect it. ESCOM's debt corresponds to the municipality's debt because the municipality does right. not pay the money over. Just let ESCOM sell directly to people. Cut there we the go. Middleman. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, you cut out the middleman. And, and, and that's another thing. I wrote this in another piece, right, but not in the – not this um, – uh, the Mises one, uh, because of um, the length of the article. But what I also agree with is that es ESCOM and all these other uh, private firms, you want to put it that way, they should be able to sell directly to the public. They don't have to go through a municipality and so forth. That's also adding unnecessary cost to it. Because you think about it, right? It, like the price that ESCOM charges, because now they have to charge per kilowatt, they may charge, let's say, two cents per kilowatt. And then the municipality says, oh, we're going to add a margin to that, another two cents per kilowatt. And then now, you know, and then you have to pay all of that. But well, then ESCOM can the municipality say, asks, it, asks some, oh, it's a margin. I'm not even against that necessarily. I think it's mm -hmm. stupid, but they can do it because they need to serve us as pay for the admin buildings and whatever. Right. Fine. The problem is the municipality never pays the money over to begin with. They just steal it. They just use it yeah. on big cars <laughs> and things like that. So, so ESCOM doesn't even get what it's owed. You yes. Know? And then ESCOM exactly. has to pay taxes and it's paid from our taxes anyway. So, I mean, the whole thing is just nuts, the way it's structured. It, agree. It, 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 agreed. It's nuts. Right. And, um, but even if the, the municipality was paying it over, 
you, you know, someone in the ESCOM boardroom or uh, some product manager or uh, in the ESCOM will be like, but guys, you know, if we sell directly to them, um, you know, we can actually save a bit, you know, because now they are charging so much to the customer and everything, and we can actually become more competitive that way. Um, and again, this is under the situation that they're competing against other um, against others who actually have the same rights as them. Um, that could also be the case as well. So um, definitely, yeah. Look, I mean, with municipalities, you got you got two layers. The first layer is the margin, and the second layer is the corruption and the inefficiency. And, I've, and, and, and if you remove the, the 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 top layer, you still have that um, problem of the margin. And ESCOM can say, look, well, we can, well, maybe what we can I would do with the margin there. is this: I would say municipalities mm -hmm. can add it, but ESCOM must pay the money over to municipalities, not the other way around. And if somebody does, because you see what municipalities are doing, yeah. if somebody does not pay his uh, property levy, for example, the only leverage mm -hmm. they have is to cut off electricity. So right, my right. view is this, the municipality should keep that right, if you will. I don't have an issue with that, but they must go to court and force ESCOM to do it. Okay, and ESCOM must cut it off for the municipalities. So in other words, you take the power yeah. away from the municipality, but you keep that thing because you want, you, or you can tell ESCOM, you need to put the guy's levy, his property tax on his electricity bill because he's stealing. We can give them those powers and still satisfy them that way. That's not an issue. Because that's how they do it in France. If I don't pay my bills yet, get some of my taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've tried not to pay a traffic fine in France. No, no, no. You, it comes in your taxes. They have figured me out very quickly over here. It's not like South my Africa. Word. You just that's give a, a 10 grand or something. That's big somebody. brother. <laughs> yeah, so but he's big brother in France. Yeah, in South Africa, you give a guy a 10 rand and a Coke, you know, and then you're off. Yeah, exactly. So, what was it? So, but think about it this way. I mean, um, in South Africa, at least you got that choice. It's either you give, and again, I'm not encouraging this behavior, right? But oh, I, some I people am. are faced I, with if this you dilemma. If get away with it, there's incentive in a market you can do it. I'm not against that. <laughs> so, no, because, you know, I, I don't want the authorities to, actually, I've got haters, and they're going to say, hey, Dumo's encouraging criminal behavior, and then they're going to just try cancel me as a result. So, as a disclaimer, I'm not encouraging this behavior, but people People are, people are actually faced with this dilemma. It's either you pay 10 Rand to the police officer right now, cannot 10 Rand. Uh, okay, let's, because now of inflation, make that, uh, let's say 100 Rand, right? So 100 Rand, right? You pay the police officer 100 Rand or you pay a 600 Rand fine. What would you do in that situation? And some cops are generous. They'll say, no, 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 don't give me 100 Rand. I just want a Coke, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, so, some, 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 some give you a change back. It's very interesting. It's like a pocket. Exactly. Oh, okay, well, I've never done it, of course, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think, oh, yeah, but, but given that the, the French model, okay, I was just making a joke about South Africa. Yeah. We have it better in that. Not that we do have it better, but at least we have a choice. In France, they just say, hey, listen, yeah, but, uh, you got to pay. My, my, the point I've got mm. here is with, with the municipalities, get back mm. to that point, is that, look, just allow ESCOM to get its own funds back and the pri it will recapitalize systemically. It can even raise funds for new plans, whatever, you know. But the problem is NERSA, the problem is municipality. The problem is we've imposed red tape on ESCOM and on the private sector. So we've destroyed both a working government utility and a private sector can't come in. And this is so stupid. And that's why load shedding will not be solved until we address this basic issue. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I, 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 I'll, I will agree with that. Uh, that um, if, we, yeah, we have to look at NERSA in order to solve load shedding. I think, I think also on top of that, I just think once, once the regulations right or out of the picture, and I, and when I say regulation, I'm talking about the price regulations and stuff like that. I'm not talking about elimination of safety protocol. So, and I also mentioned that in the article as well that even though I want NERSA to go, I'm not saying that we must now deny safety protocol. But if we, uh, if NERSA is uh, done away with, right, it will allow for more, for better ideas on how electricity can be provided and delivered. And if municipalities can be bypassed, so be it. So be it. Because really, I mean, if you're inefficient, if you're making the process more inefficient, why should um, someone use you? I mean, like, for example, I mean, I've got... Um, I mean, let's say like you live in a house, right? And you've got a fiber line, right? And now people say, yeah, but Telcom puts it, puts, uh, lays down the infrastructure. But hey, someone can probably create um, some sort of way of using the, of getting internet service without using fiber, but the line is faster than fiber and it's cheaper than fiber. You know what I mean? And what I'm saying is that now with electricity, I'm not saying that um, you will get solutions of that nature, but you, you need to allow for, solution for innovative solutions to come in so that people can actually provide them and test them that's it and i think if you do that 
we will see better results and load shedding will will be solved much quicker don't know how far, I mean, how much faster though well I, as i said the, the estimates i have if we approve natural mm -hmm. gas from south africa is 18 to 18 months to um to three years and some of those things have been approved actually so it might even be quicker than people think okay. natural gas mm -hmm. can easily solve a problem just import it can go on trucks okay you have to have an import facility which is based an ideal location for one and i think cape mm -hmm. town maybe and let them import and the brilliant thing of natural gas is this there's 40 countries in the world buying and selling okay there's no geopolitical leverage there's no opec cartel there's no saudi arabia of natural gas not even qatar is that big it's the ideal free market which is why natural gas is so competitive it's the cheapest electricity in the world so i know i'm in, fa I'm in favor of nuclear and i say south africa must build nuclear around the coast I, I say that from an engineering point of view and because i love the technology but for solving load shedding at the moment just get natural gas even if it's a turkish ship and somebody accepted the brown envelope i don't care i accept corruption even okay <laughs> <laughs> corruption i don't is, i don't <laughs> I, I i i accept it as a maker from a machiavellian point of view because the, the 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 cost of no electricity is worse than corruption okay so i look at it from a trade-off analysis yes ideal world you don't That's, want any minister to steal yeah. but this is south africa work under the conditions you're at so all you yeah. need to do is just pass the rules get rid of nursa and say anyone who wants to sell electricity can do so in south africa and before you know it even escom will get the incentive that listen guys we need to start performing or there's private sector going to compete against us and then you have the the the, the base of both worlds you know yeah yeah agreed agreed um yeah hopefully uh, what i would prefer is that if escom not escom sorry if nursa gets done away with we don't no, no brown paper bags because you know how the, the the game of optics works right like let's say somewhere down the line something goes wrong and they say hey you know um when nursa got eliminated you know how the socialists are they're gonna say when so when um, nursa was done for or was taken out of the market or whatever where they or taken out as a regulator um it, a brown paper bag was delivered to this minister and that that i mean it's going to be on well there's no more third degree anymore but it's going to be on some documentary on on sabc oh, somewhere and then yeah well yeah cot blanche but hey but cot blanche you need eminence and eminence uh i don't know if they still have that open time thing eh? oh but now there's um now i forgot guys i'm thinking back like way in the 90s but i think now a lot of people have access to like decoders and there's what um there's there's, there's those dstv packages now but there is the one, I forgot what they call it. I only know that there's a premium and there's one right at the top. But you see, that's I'm, how you need to sell electricity. You give people a premium, a package, exactly. a sport package, things of like that. So you give them a service. And you tell them, exactly. guys, you have access. And, you know, if you're, uh, if you're somebody cooking, you only pay 100 rand a month, maybe. If you're somebody yeah. that's, you know, got games and you've got uh, heavy electricity, you pay more. And that's it. And you optimize exactly. your service. And before you know it, you've got creative solutions and we're all fine. That's the, and if South Africa implements a service model, we will be one of the first countries in the world. You know which other country is doing it? People never guess. I would like to know. Uh, can you guess? Which country do you think sells electricity as a service? I wouldn't say it's France. Is it no. France? Lebanon. Uh, which, which one is it? it, it Lebanon. Lebanon. And you know Even why? Even after getting bombed like that? Jeepers. Even, okay. You know wow, why? That's... Because Lebanon, uh -huh. they have electricity to Lebanon. It's like ESCOM. It's a useless utility. Yeah. And then the mafia stepped in and said, we're going to give you all the service. So they have two electricity bills in Lebanon. They have one for the electricity to Lebanon, one for the mafia. And the mafia yeah. gets you electricity at anything possible, whether it's a generator, whether it's a solar panel, whether it's a power station, doesn't matter. Whether they have to bribe a minister to redirect the wire, it doesn't matter. The mafia gets it done in Lebanon. And that's how Lebanese have escaped <laughs> electricity, okay, by providing a service. Okay. So all we well, need to do go. is go and learn from the Lebanese mafia on how yeah. to run an electricity system. They agreed suffered. agreed agreed and uh again not to <laughs> it, it seems like the mafia runs it better than um a, a what is it a mafia serve a very government. important function mafias are there to corrupt government when they are too expensive and when regulations are too tight that's mm. why south africa has mafias everywhere mafias are there it's a market signal it's a signal of government failure if you change the rules mm. the mafia will become honest okay that's why mafias are always in things like strip clubs and stuff that are technically illegal but yet there's a demand for them okay as soon as they yeah, become and, legal the mafias yeah. go away and alcohol the exactly. beginning of the last century and in lebanon they need electricity why because the lebanese have the same issue as us they cannot put their own electricity legally okay so the mafia is doing it illegally and then they charge a price it. well look i mean now that you're mentioning that it could be that we might have our own mafia that's going to do the same thing but if there's yeah, a mafia there, like they, they, South Africa. Maybe they are. Maybe they're just starting with small communities and then 
building forward from there. Oh yeah, but so, sorry, just one more point. Um, on the optics point of view, just mm. that if, if if let's say Nursa does go and it's far and, and it's discovered that a brown paper bag was used to incentivize the deal, I mean, from a Machiavellian perspective, people say that's great. But you know how optics work. You know, people are going to say it's this is a bad thing. Um, I can see someone like Chomsky saying, you see, this is the reason why it should, why we should have NERSA and so forth. Um, I can see other socialists using that as a reason as to why the market shouldn't get in or why we shouldn't use the market for electricity because it's just corruption, corruption, corruption. No, I, 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 I hear you. You should not yeah. bribe your way out of a regulator. They should just, we should just all say, look, the issue is NERSA. Okay, this is my view. It's not ESCOM, it's not the engineers, it's not BE, it's not transformation, it's not corruption, it's not Madupi and Kusil. I've heard all these arguments. They played some role. That's not the big issue. The big issue here is NERSA. And all the political parties just need to say, let's get rid of NERSA. Okay? Even when I spoke to the DA's uh, uh, representative on this, he was very resistant of getting rid of NERSA. I don't know why. Okay, So even the DA is not in a free market in terms of electricity. They say they want transmission and this and this, and then they want NERSA to manage the rates. And no, that doesn't going to work. No, 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 no. No, no. That's still the same problem. Get rid of NERSA. Yeah. If we get rid of NERSA, South Africa will solve load shedding between 18 months and three years. That's my estimates. That's when I speak to people who are industry experts. Probably quicker because some of the gas plans have already been approved. And LNG is the best solution for South Africa at this stage because it's so competitive internationally. There's only like a few ships idle. That's how competitive it is. So that thing's idle for a few wow. months, and that company fails. It's the ultimate free market. Okay. And there's right. no geopolitical leverage. When Russia tried to, with this war in Ukraine, people say Germany has been, mm -hmm. um, you know, put in a bad situation. It's not true. Within six months, the Germans got gas from the rest of the world. Okay. That's just free market working. So right. LNG is the path of the future. I'm not choosing some analogy. I'm just saying if it plays out, I suspect LNG is going to win. I'm even in favor of using a solar panel at this stage. And that's all South Africa needs to do. We don't need more clever engineering. We don't need transmission lines to the Karoo. We need nothing. Just get rid of NERSA and allow anyone to put up a power station wherever. And before you know it, the problem is solved. We can yeah. all go to bed and we can all go hate the government for something else, you know? <laughs> <laughs> agreed, agreed, agreed. Uh, yeah, no, uh, Hugo, I'm, I'm, I'm 110 percent aligned with that. I think that's, I think that's the key. And uh, I, I think uh, for me, um, there was something I wanted to say, but I kind mm -hmm. of forgot. But I'll just say this point, right? But I, I think um, ultimately, um, let's also look at other markets where there's not much regulation or the regulation is not as intense as the electricity right. market so in the article i mentioned um i called there were these products i called them load shedding management products right and when load shedding got severe um people started buying these products like inverters generators and so forth and even the ceo well not the ceo the vice president of game uh he said the following he said that in november and december and january uh this is uh 2022 he says that we have seen a 101% increase in the amount of generators sold and 311% increase in the number of inverters sold. So um, it just shows you that in markets where it shows you there's a problem with electricity supply and people are yep. willing to actually pay their own money to buy alternatives to at least fill the gap of um, that ESCOM cannot fill. And, we've, and that market has surged. So I'm like, and, and why? Because there's not a lot of regulations in there. At, at best, there probably will be safety regulations. But now, if you look at NERSA with the power that they have, they're literally strangling the market. Imagine now if we just had that freedom. And, and exactly what you said, probably gas would win the, the, the race on that one. Yeah, I, I, I mean, as somebody who's worked in a variety of energy systems, um, mm -hmm. my sense is just, you see, natural gas is advantage is so dispatchable. But here's another problem in South Africa. Mm -hmm. At the moment, people use diesel for their generators. Natural mm -hmm. gas can replace all diesel generators. It's much more efficient and cheaper. There's a diesel mafia in South Africa preventing the import of natural gas. There's a cartel. And that needs oh. to be taken on as well. You see, so the interest against natural gas is incredible. Because it takes yeah. diesel. That means all ESCOM's diesel can be replaced by natural gas. And it means we can fix the coal plants while the LNG picks up the slack. Right? There's so okay. many, there, there's mm -hmm. so many uh, uh, advantages of natural gas at this stage for South Africa. Mozambique is... But here's the thing. People are thinking backwards. Mm -hmm. They want us to export the Karoo gas because it's the seventh largest in the world and things like that. That's just backwards thinking. Just open the market. And if that thing becomes viable, an entrepreneur can open it up. Even a BE entrepreneur. I don't care. 
okay? But don't go and put your money in extraction before you've got the domestic market. That's the mistake that the Russians have made, right? All you need, Russia does not have a domestic gas market that's very big. And that's why Russia is running out of gas because they've closed down their Soviet yeah. era gas fields. And Russia now has to import from Yamal, which is 3,000 kilometers from Moscow. Okay, so gas prices in Russia are actually subsidized at this stage. America did it the right way. They had Pennsylvania, they had a gas market created. And then some genius said, Oh, I've got gas in my backyard. We're going to sell it. They're selling next to the market. So all we need to do is just trade in it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't try and dictate the trade because gas has got so many applications. You don't know where you're going to use it anymore. It can be used for fertilizers. It can be used for so many things. And as I say, it's such a competitive market and so affordable. We'll drive down food. We'll drive down transport. We'll drive down everything for South Africa. And before we know it, exactly. we've got the logistics economy and we can grow the economy again. So that's my option now, for load shedding. Yeah? Right. So, okay, uh, just a quick question. This is probably an engineering question. So... Um, now, you said they would replace, you said that gas would replace diesel generators because they're more um, efficient and so forth yeah. in providing electricity only, right? It's not that you can use gas um, for other applications of diesel. You can, for cook, you can use it for cooking, you can use it, you can replace. Uh, the only problem where you can't use it is for heavy intensive um, digging, like mining and things like that. For there, you still use. Even for uh, vehicles? You can, you can, you have mixed systems in vehicles where some of the mm -hmm. diesel is replaced by gas. So you have a mixed system, but when the power okay. density becomes high, diesel is more efficient. Okay, so they have a mixed system where yeah. you, 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 the mix of gas to diesel ratio change depends on the energy you need. Diesel has more energy burden right. than mass, but you don't need that everywhere. You don't need that high energy density. So gas has got more, valid, uh, more applications and fertilizers. I mean, a few farmers can club together and put a small LNG plant on. Before you know it, yeah. you've got the, you've got your own power station for a small town, for example, and gas wow. fills all the gaps in the system that solar and wind can't do. It's better. It's it's the ultimate battery. It's the way I explain it. Okay. And it's it's liquefied. Okay. You can put it on trucks. You know, you just need an import and export facility. But there's there's some terminals, and the gas sector has had only one major accident in the last forty years. I think it's so safe. So yeah, just import it. No, uh, yeah, that uh, that, that, that sounds encouraging. Um, cause I'm just thinking, look, if we use the natural gas, then the, what we're using diesel for will have more for the other applications. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you can do use for water mining. You can use, you can, exactly. can mine more with diesel because yeah. then we've got diesel. So it's not even a threat to the diesel industry and it's not a threat to coal either. That's the other thing people need to understand. Cause as I say, you can, you can, those stations at Kumati, my view is the minister of electricity is correct. Just switch them on. I mean, if there's a little bit more pollution, who cares? We need electricity right now. But you can you you can replace them temporarily maybe with an LNG plant, and you can replace the coal. You can uh, allow ESCOM to do its maintenance because coal is still very good for base load. And the mm -hmm. other thing is this: if we upgrade our coal stations to higher coal, so in some cases coal is more competitive than gas. Okay. Right. So right. you can even save the coal industry using LNG. That's my view. There's so many. They, 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 it, it's got. It's it, like they say in the industry. It's the midwife. It catches the baby wherever there's a shortage in the system, and that's why it's so it's so efficient. So, natural gas is my solution. But I, I would not say I'm going to sell natural gas. I should just have a policy right. of competition, and I suspect natural gas will win out. That's just yeah. my sense okay. of it. Understand? Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Well, um, do you know? Yeah, because we're running close to time. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Is there anything you're working on that people can look forward to? Yeah, um, yeah. First of all, thanks for having me on. This is great. This was great. I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, yeah, anything I'm working on. Look, I still write a few articles for Mises here and there. I'm working on that. Also for Man Patreon as well. I'm also working on some new content. So people just got to be a bit patient. I haven't been uh, releasing in a while, yeah. but um, there's a reason why. I'm just work. I'm just focusing on other activities that will make man patriot better in the future so keep a lookout okay, for that well, a, a, a next topic for you for your free market mind and deregulation mind because i know you like attacking bad regulation mm -hmm. regulation somebody needs to blow up that thing you know give you all the stuff i've got from a more economist perspective but there's a lot of stuff that makes it more expensive than it should be and people need to start exposing it so that's that's the exactly. that's my my task for you if i can give you an instruction you know yeah, yeah, no problem. I, I can do that. I mean, healthcare, healthcare insurance. Oh my goodness, medical aid. Um, yeah, that, that's a big one. I, I think. I, I mean, again, um, I, I don't, I don't want to um, jump into it now if you don't want me to. But I'll just say, um, I, I do think medical aids are not given enough flexibility on what policies that they can create and what they can cover for. And I'll just give you. Okay, let me just tell you a story of mine. 
Um, I've got a I've got an eye disease, right? Criticalness, right? It's I had it since had it for about close to ten or over ten years now, and um, basically it's a condition where your um, your um, your cornea becomes more cone shaped, and as a result mm -hmm. of that, when the light reflects uh, refracts off your cornea, you start to see multiple images, and then and it progresses, then it stops. It doesn't it, does, it doesn't make you completely blind, but it can make you um, legally blind, mm -hmm. right? So check this out. So keratoconus, a lot of medical aids don't cover for it that oh. much. They be, they'll they'll cover for the hospital costs, but for the actual treatment, not so much. And I, I struggled a lot with medical aids trying to get treatment for this. Fortunately, right. the one that I am with now, they covered, I think, hundred percent of the hospital costs, but only twenty five percent of the treatment costs. Right, that I that I needed an operation for. So the operation is known as cross linking and stuff like that. But what is weird is that in regulations, medical aids, they have to cover for, let's say, type 2 diabetes, right? They have to cover for it no matter what. They call that minimum yeah. prescribed benefits. And I was like, but that doesn't create the right behaviors. Because now if, a, if, if someone has to pay for someone who's got type 2 diabetes, type 2 diabetes is a lifestyle-related disease that is preventable. Medical aids can actually create a product that, incentivizes people to live healthy so that they can claim less for type 2 diabetes and then they can and then that um portion that for for eye conditions that i have no control over they can cover for that and they can't cover for many of these conditions because they are because they 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 tightly regulated so that's one that's one industry healthcare wow um somebody told me now here sort of in private that the person to blame for the municipality idea is Kader Asmal. apparently he came up with this genius idea that municipalities are better at collecting debt from and they apparently destroyed water as well in south africa and that's something yeah. else i've been on is that water electricity we can that's why we ran out of water in 2008. Yeah. South, africa, oh south africa is at load shedding for water as well we don't know it yet because we load shedding for industrial applications. We still have enough for drinking water, but not for industrial applications. And the, my, that's Jeez. why I say nuclear along the coast, because that will desalinate the seawater inland rivers recover. That's why I'm in favor of nuclear. Okay, it's that solution. Ah. But again, private sector can't come in. or they, they, Nobody can come into water at the moment because the regulations, not even government can come in. That's how stupid the regulations are. So we need to blow up these... I don't know, nurse us, whatever. They're all over the place, you say, regulations. Medical aid's another one. Anyways, Dumo, yeah. thank you very much for this conversation. And um, yeah, everyone, please subscribe to his podcast, Mon Patria. And he's always written, right? He always writes intelligent stuff for, um, for, for what Mises, that's what you mainly write, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Follow me there. Thanks, everyone, for listening.